Chainsaws. Chainsaws, chainsaws, chainsaws. Chainsaws are, well, a very fun weapon, but not a very effective weapon. You know, you get blood all over you and get infected. Then you turn into one of those nasty zombies. Then we gotta shoot you. Also, eventually you run out of extension cord. And that's embarrassing. <laughs> or gas. You got a gas power one. Shane bludgeon. One to ten damage running. <laughs> Vehicle choices. Now, the zombie apocalypse, once again, you don't want to be rolling around in the Lamborghini because, you know, things are kind of flimsy, as cool as they are. You know, it's going to break down in two seconds. You want to get something that's reliable, something that, you know, doesn't eat up a lot of gas. Say, like, you know, you don't want to get a Hummer. You know, you'll drive down the block and just kind of be stuck there. It's never good. You know, you want to get something like, you know, an SUV. <laughs> leave, leave now. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, another talking point, durability. You want something that can last. You know, you want something like or an expedition or something, trailblazer or something like that. Carry around people, carry some stuff around in it. And you also want something, you know, you can mow zombies over it. <laughs> One other thing to note real quick. All this is situational. You're stuck in a tractor trailer production plant. Use what you got. But when the option is presented and you have the time to have it, inner monologue intellectual debate, you know, then, yeah, all that. <laughs> yeah, monster trucks. <laughs> Tanks. Oh. zombies, they're incredibly durable, they can take a bullet, you can't take a bite as well as they can take a bullet. And killing every single zombie while it seems a good idea isn't going to happen. you got to get away. And, you know, this is how you're going to do it. Group breakdown. You're going to want to have people with you. You can't take this alone. Uh, you know, we're not all the dude from Dead Rising. So you want to have, you know, your group dynamic worked out. You want to have a group leader, people who know that they're combat oriented, people that know that they're just carrying supplies. Um, you gotta make sure that you know you have the right person doing things. We're not gonna make you know a tiny little four foot tall chick carrying all the gear and having Mike walking around with a little med pack going, "What's up, guys?" <laughs> uh, food rationing, you know. Again, if anyone here has ever played Oregon Trail, which is probably all of you. How many of you died the first week? John brought cholera. Increase speed. <laughs> and establish destination. Uh, you want to plan. You want to know where you're going. You want to know why you're going there. You want to know how to get there. And you want to know several ways to get there when plans A through C fail. You also want to establish a timetable. You uh, you know want to cover X amount of distance and X amount of time. Um, why? Because I said so. <laughs> All right. So. When you're on the run, you want to remember a few things. First of all, you want to keep focused. You don't want to suffer any kind of breakdown. You don't want to kind of get cabin fever, if you will. Uh, gather intelligence, you know. Again, killing every single zombie is not that great of an idea. When it comes to remain focused, another thing that's meant, um, don't get sidetracked. Don't look and go, oh my god, there's, there's a Toys R Us. I wonder if they still have Naruto action figures. <laughs> keep, keep your mind on the mission. But I want those action figures. <laughs> okay. Oh my god, the Toys R Us for Super Soakers for Acid. Super Soakers for Acid? Uh, that could kind of work. With the, well, well, I'll save that for the question and answer. 
is I have a long answer for it. Uh, avoid population centers. Uh, unfortunately, how many people here live in, li actually live in New York? You're all gonna die. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll feel bad for you. Um, I'll be in my summer in Massachusetts going on. I miss those people. They were nice, they were a nice crowd, but uh, it sucks to be done. <laughs> if you're stuck in Massachusetts. <laughs> I mean, let's face it, if a zombie outbreak occurs right now, we're all pretty much screwed. Uh, it's just, there's too much congestion. The more people, the more zombies. We're rushing all you can eat buffet. Stay alert. You know, you don't want to be caught with your pants down around your ankles. If you saw Zombieland, literally, you don't want to be caught with your pants around your ankles. You don't want to get bit there. Maintain a low profile. This goes back to the firearms, actually. Um, the more noise you make, the more you broadcast your presence. I mean, again, anyone that's ever played any kind of military video game has probably played the stealth level where the second you shot off your magnum, you got screwed because everyone will level attacked you. Same thing with zombies, they can hear you. And keep your timetable and take care of your body. You know, you want to make sure that you cover the distance you want to cover, but you don't want to kill yourself at the same time. So, you know, it's that little uh, back and forth dynamic there. Attack strategies. These are the fun ones. And, okay. So the bait and lure. A lot of these are more or less exactly what they sound like. Um, Bait lore, you end up doing something where the zombies come to where you are, and you have a kill zone set up so you can just you know, kind of mow them down at your leisure. Uh, the flood and choke, again, more of the same idea, idea, just on a much larger scale. You have a massive, massive horde of zombies, like let's say the city of New York. And then you get a somewhat controlled level, like, I don't know, one end of George Washington Bridge or so, with a whole bunch of guns on the other side, maybe a couple of National Guard platoons, I don't know. My favorite. The motorized sweep. Hand me my uh, hand gun, please. The motorized sweep is when you get your you get your boys down. You gotta make sure your both five don't make them zombies grow. <laughs> I miss you, Tupac. <laughs> He's still alive, you know. Is he a zombie? Uh, turns out the situation at the baggage claim has gotten a little bit out of hand. We are sending uh, Lieutenant Apocalypse out there to take care of it. Godspeed, sir. Now I have rank. <laughs> Still out of your jurisdiction. Shut up! <laughs> I hate you! The tower. Uh, again, it's a fairly simple idea. You get a high up area where the zombies can't get to you. Uh, you give someone, you know, a crap load of food and an even larger crap load of ammunition. And just have them, you know, have a field day just blasting zombies away. Maybe have, like, you know, a speaker below them playing something really annoying to get zombies around, like Lady Gaga or Justin Bieber or whatever. That's just the queen zombies. Zombies love the Bieber. A firing line. Uh, anyone that read World War Z knows about the firing line. You have several lines of people. One line shooting, one line reloading, one line for combat fatigue. Uh, it's pretty effective to see a lot of people doing it depending on, you know, how large scale you're dealing with. If you are somewhere out in upstate New York where you know there's 10,000 miles between you and your neighbor, you don't need that many people to take care of you know the most zombies you're gonna see, which is like two. <laughs> a speaker bunker, a variation of the tower where you are in an enclosed location, again, blaring some very loud music, and you just kind of like, you know, sit in a little fortified location with a heavy assault rifle and just go to town. It's very great, you know, stress reliever. I uh, highly recommend it. Exactly. Uh, the cage. The cage is one that I've gotten in trouble a lot for mentioning. Uh, there's always somebody at the end of every panel who yells at me for this, but you take a small little cage that you know a human hand can't get into, um, maybe put it inside of another cage and another cage, and just to make sure that it's safe and durable, suspend it probably, um, or keep it bolted to something so it's not getting knocked around and you know messed up by the zombies. Then you take something small and loud, like an injured cat, a child, a Twilight fan. Thank you, sir. And then while all the zombies are going towards the cage, you wait until there's a large enough mass of them, and, I don't know, you set up like 25 pounds of C4 or something. Then there's saturation bombing. I like saturation bombing. <laughs> 
Uh, mainly because, you know, when Reach falls, or New York falls, whichever falls, you just uh, get on the horn to the military, and they just blow the hell out of everything that lives or doesn't live. Uh, essentially reducing a city to a pile of burning, smoldering, fleshy, smelling rubble. Settling down, because let's face it, even in the dumb box, you want to, you know, find a nice girl, choose her mom, raise a family. <laughs> oh, dang. Alrighty. Things to think about for settling down. You want to make sure that there's some kind of perimeter. You, you don't want zombies getting in. How many entrances and exits? This is incredibly important. People don't always think to barricade or know all the escape routes. I mean, think about it. People that like you know live in the apartment building. How many of you actually know all the fire exits? One person, two people, three, four. Okay, yeah, now you're all thinking yourself. There's the one that's <laughs> in the east hall, and then there's another one. Kiki lives down there. No, I don't want to go to her. Um, I mean, if you look around here, there are you know one, two, three, Five. four exits to get out of here. Five. Yeah, one, two, those two down there. I mean, the double doors, but I count those one each. So one, two, three, and then if zombies come in here, I'm gonna cool it through that wall. <laughs> that makes four. <laughs> oh yeah. Can it be defended simultaneously? Again, this is just important, as important as knowing how to get out of them. You wanna look around and be able to say, look, if we get zombies coming in through there, zombies coming in through there, and we only have, you know, two people with guns, we're gonna get overwhelmed. Uh, so you wanna have, you know, one barricaded, but this then gets into the emergency escape routes, so you want your barricade people to come down so you can get the hell out of it. Uh, secondary position, you know, you want to, you don't retreat, you fall back. And when the zombies start beating on the doors, you're going to fall back probably a lot. The water source, uh, John talked about this a little bit earlier. Most buildings that you're going to try to hide out in, you know, after a while, plumbing's going to stop working, city's not being maintained properly. Uh, ideally, some kind of building with like a water tower that's going to get a refill of rain. Um, or some, I live in uh, the city of Boston, we have Cambridge, which has a lot of hippies, and almost every single one of them has like a rainwater collection on their roof. So like, I'm going down there and taking their hoop, but they don't have guns, and I do. <laughs> uh, are weapons and tools available? You know, this is kind of a one that I don't really so much like on here, because let's face it, most places, you're not really gonna find a lot of weapons, because so many cities have a lot of restrictions on them. Um, you're gonna have to go out like, you know, somewhere down south, some kind of survivalist compound, and. But, they're not going to let you in. Unless you live in Texas. Exactly. Um, and that's Castle Law. And they will shoot you over their can of beans. Uh, I mean, you know, you can go to a military depot, but chances are it's going to be filled. It, I mean, places like that are going to be congested. It's, uh, again, kind of a give and take. Uh, but you have to build three and entries. You know, okay, great. You got to a school that, you know, you know all the ways through it, and there's only a couple of entrances. And crap, you don't have a way to barricade the doors as Grandma Zombie comes in and bites your neck open. You know, if there's like, one of the things I like to play around with is uh, prison, because they have machine shops which have welding torches and you can, you know, weld doors shut and, you know, do other such makeshift MacGyver things to keep the place secure. The problem with that being that prisons have a lot of prisoners and they tend to not like people. Anti-social, I don't know why. Uh, external internal communication, again, you want to be able to talk to any other survivors if there's any kind of, you know, escape coming, if there's any kind of um, help coming ever from the military, you want them to know, hey, we here. Uh, you know, paint a sign on the roof, survivors here, you know. Watch, watch like, you know, how they did Katrina, where they had, like, you know, signs, people in this building. Uh, let's see. And is, what's standing is CDC, extend, zip, 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 zip. Is withstanding an extended siege possible? I can't say that phrase. Uh, again, how durable is it? Are the doors going to get broken down? Uh, are there windows that zombies are going to pile up to? You know, little things that make, you know, little small houses bad ideas. Uh, a lot of this is more or less self-explanatory for fortifying location. You know, I like to dig moat. Um, I wasn't there for that planning session, and somebody decided to go like all medieval with the chain mail, the plate mail, and the boats. <laughs> Uh, I guess it was our British division. <laughs> um, but again, you want to keep the perimeter inspected. If you have a large enough group, uh, you want to bring